So the black fire of Amaterasu versus Akainu's double fruit. Your brain hates math but loves mathematical conclusions. Can I chart the range of temperatures between fire and magma and the sun? Sure, I could do that. Now I'm counting magma as anything solid that can melt. So we're going to get to some very low temperatures here. The lowest magma can go is negative 272.2 degrees Celsius, and the highest is 4,100 degrees Celsius. That's the melting point of helium and the melting point of hafnium carbide. For the values of fire, I've kept it to just combustible fires, no exotic matter yet. So that actually rules out a lot of the sun. And we get a low of 300 degrees and a high of 8,000 degrees. And if we were to plot them, it would look like this. As you can see, fire can get quite hotter than magma, and magma can get a little cooler than fire. And there's this range in the middle that they can overlap. But let's take it one further and add sunspots into this. The coolest sunspots are about 3,000 degrees. The hottest are about 4,500 degrees. So if we're not considering all of fire and just the temperature of sunspots, you see that the sunspot overlaps with the magma range right at the end, but still can get hotter than magma. Now, Amaterasu apparently burns as hot as the sun. We don't know what part of the sun. So let's increase that range to any temperature of the sun. The coolest temperature on the sun is about 3,000 degrees, and the hottest is uh, 15 million. So, uh, yeah, the full range of temperatures on the sun dwarfs magma and fire and sunspots. You can't even see them. But I'm going to go one step further. You know what's more powerful than both a Kainu and the fire of Amaterasu? Science! I have now included the lowest temperature we ever got in a lab, which is 38 picokelvins, just 38 trillionths of a degree above absolute zero, and the hottest temperature we got to in a lab which is four trillion degrees. So move over Akainu and Itachi. Uh, conventional science has got you both beat by magnitudes.